let's get started um, with Meg Linehan. Go ahead, Meg. And Becky, Meg Linehan at The Athletic. Bucko started off this press conference by telling us you are now captain of the national team again. Um, I will tell you, as soon as I tweeted that, it was an instant party on Twitter at this point. So if you could walk us through your, your viewpoint of, you know, obviously you've been captain in a, in a number of different situations on this team before and now again, what, what are, how are you coming to this role for 2021 where this team is right now? How is it different for you at this point? So I'll just say right off the bat, extraordinary honor to be named the captain. And I'm going to work my butt off and follow in the legacy of all the, the people that have worn the armband and been in this role before. And I also consider myself extremely lucky in that I am on a team that is just full of leaders. And I'm fortunate that the, the veterans on this team are as experienced as they are. And then you kind of have that middle crop of player like the Sam Muses and the JJs and the Crystals. Who are, who are really starting to come into their own leadership, and even the young ones like Atirna Davidson. And so for me, it's not so much I have to change. It's really I bring the behaviors that I've always brought. And I've been that type of leader when I was the captain of this team a couple years ago. And so the role can always change, but I think the behaviors always stay the same. And so for me, I just need to stay the same person, lead in the same way, and just really empower those around me to really let them show their strengths. And so collectively, our strengths are always going to be stronger than our weaknesses. I just have one follow-up for you, and that is, do you think that they give you the captain's because they know that you don't like sleeves and they just want to put something on your arm? Yeah, no, I definitely think it's like a, they're trying to make sure I don't get a yellow card from the referees because I'm always being told to keep pulling the, the sleeves down. So it's definitely uh, a preemptive strike there. Got it. All right. Thanks, Becky. Congratulations. Thank you. Meg made a valid point that it will be the most visible armband <laughs> in recent memory. Um, but we're going on to JT. Jonathan Tannenwald, you are up. Go ahead. Thanks, Aaron. Becky, congratulations again. You know, we had, we had Sam on, knew us on here a moment ago, and and she said, sometimes I look, I look to Becky as my moral compass, like whatever she's doing is what I know is right, so I should probably do the same thing. And, you know, we've spoken this week with Megan and with Lindsay and a bunch of other people about this team's anti-racism efforts and its activism in many different ways on and off the field. And you've been at the forefront uh, of that for a long time, and I wonder if you wouldn't mind just discussing a bit about uh, sort of where things are in the moment and where you hope to take them. Yeah, absolutely. I think this last game against the Netherlands was really our first time as a, as a full team where we've actually had discussions about racial justice and racial equality and really being vulnerable with one another and sharing. And I think, and I'm hoping that that's the first of, of many conversations that we're going to have. And you saw us wear the Black Lives Matter anthem jackets, which is something that we're looking to do um, moving forward, especially for these two games. And then we're also continuing those discussions about how else we can make an impact. And so, um, you know, we're talking with U.S. Soccer, we're talking with the Black Women's Player Collective, and we're just really trying to, to go to that next step of what actionable things can we start doing to, to affect change. I have one other admittedly far less serious question to ask, which is, do you think that this might elevate your teammates' pursuit to get you your first goal with the national team? <laughs> That's a good question. Oh, man. Um, well, I've, I've said it in the past that I will not take a PK. Um, and so if I do score a goal, it's going to come just organically. And I don't think any players are going to try to set me up from back in the back. And so if it happens, it happens. But honestly, uh, I think Heifetz, I hold that record of most caps without a goal scored. So, you know, there's some fame in that record. Thanks, as always. Good luck. <laughs> She doesn't quite hold the record, but she's coming in hot on Kate Markrath. So a few more caps and she might be there. Um, all right, Jeff Carlisle, you are up. Go ahead. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, it's Jeff Carlisle here from ESPN.com. Um, I, I was wondering when you are named the captain, in terms of your day-to-day, -day, what, if anything, changes? Are you checking in on players more? Are you checking in with the coaching staff more? I mean. To what extent does that dynamic change a little bit? Uh, so like I said before, I don't think my leadership really changes. And my type of leadership is that I do check in with players. And I check in with them 
um, in camp and out of camp. That's always kind of been my style to send a text and be like, hey, how you doing? Saw you got injured. You know, how's your rehab going? Do you need anything from me? So I don't think, I don't think that's going to change. I think some of my responsibilities will maybe be doing more uh, pressers like this one. Um, definitely being more of that uh, kind of conduit between the the technical staff and the players, and the support staff and the players, and just making sure that the players feel like they're getting everything that they need to make sure that they can be at their best. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Going to back to Sandra. Go ahead, Sandra. Uh, Sandra Reda from CBS Sports. Uh, thanks a lot for your time, Becky. Uh, there's been a, a lot of glowing <laughs> conversation about your announcement as, as captain, and, and we just had Sam, and she did mention about you being the moral compass. I was wondering uh, for you, for someone who's been a part of the team for so long, uh, who else maybe inspires you to, to sort of keep being the, the leader that you, you strive to be? I mean, it's it's hard to name. I mean, I think about the people that have worn and been the captain of this team, and I think of Carla Overbeck, and I know when I was younger, like 14, and watching her play, the respect that she commanded on the field, and then you hear players now talk about these these moments that she had where her leadership was just so all-consuming that people wanted to just chant like, Carla, Carla, you know? So um, being able to be in the same group as her and I can aspire to that type of leadership and probably won't get anywhere close to Carla, um, but I think for me, she's kind of that ideal. And then I think of the players like Christy Rampone and Abby Wambach, and most recently, Megan Rapino, Carly Lloyd, Alex Morgan, like all these people have something about them that make them phenomenal and have such gravity about them. And so I only hope to, to have something about me that makes people feel inspired. Um, and so I guess time will tell. And just to, to follow up, I know you mentioned how conversations are constantly ongoing with your teammates when it comes to things like our current state of affairs in the country or uh, protection and uh, honoring and protecting uh, black teammates and black life moving forward. Um, for someone who is, is, is the leader of this team, when you think about those conversations or when you're speaking about those, uh, are those in your mind or are supposed to be more broader conversations? Are those something that you think uh, are more impactful when they're more uh, centered and uh, individual? So I just will make sure to say I am not the leader. I am a leader, uh, one of many. And so when it comes to discussions, there are a lot of people that rely on one another. And so for these discussions, we've gone from very broad to very specific. And most recently, you talk about the attack on the Capitol. That's something that we've centered discussions around and something that leading into the game tomorrow, we kind of have a, a plan of how we want to respond. Thanks so much, Becky. Good luck, Mom. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, Andrew. Last couple for Bex. We'll go to Steph Young. Go ahead, Steph. Thanks, Aaron, and thank you, Becky. Um, we talked to Vlatko just a while ago, and he mentioned how one of the things they want to focus on coming out of this January camp is being more ruthless as a defensive unit and how he doesn't want the attitude to be we're defending without the ball, we're attacking without the ball. So for you as a, a leader, you know, on that backline unit, um, how have you been, you know, mentally and I guess technically implementing that in training? And how does that contribute to the likelihood of getting a goal from you? No pressure. <laughs> uh, it actually gives me less of a chance for getting a goal because the way that our attacking players and our midfield are able to high press and win the ball higher up the field, they actually give me a lot less to do in the back. And so what Flacco is saying about we're almost more dangerous when we don't have the ball at times, I mean, it's, it's honestly really true. And I know myself playing against are attacking players in training that it is sometimes near impossible to break them down when they're all on the same page. And even if they're slightly off, just the sheer mentality to win the ball back, it somehow just happens. The grittiness and the relentlessness of, of our defensive team and how we, the style of how we want to defend, it's actually kind of extraordinary. And so I think if we continue to work on that, and I really think that it will be very, very difficult for any team in the world to break us down. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me find Jeff Kasup here, who's having some issues with his hand raising. Go ahead, Jeff. Some issues with hand raising, indeed. Um, thanks. Uh, thank you. Congratulations again. I'm sure you're excited to be that frequent conduit to the press that you mentioned. Um, you mentioned the leadership style, you know, 
those things, the day-to-day -day not changing and, and on the player front, um, you know, maybe similar deal, but curious, you know, it's a different coach. This captaincy is one that you're very familiar with, obviously from the club days. So just wondering if there's anything different in terms of that interaction uh, with Zlatko and, and maybe if not just kind of the general uh, relationship there given the history. Yeah, I mean, I, that was something that I was I was thinking about having had Blacko for five years. Um, did that maybe weigh into any of his decision making? And I honestly, I can't answer that question. You'd have to ask Blacko that. Um, I think, in a way, he does he does know me well. He does know where my heart lies. He knows how much I've always loved this team and loved this program. And so, when I spoke to him about the captaincy, when he asked if I wanted to be the the captain of this team, you know, I I kind of had asked him, you know, what are you really looking f for, like, from me? And he said, you just keep doing what you're doing because clearly the players, you know, have a high respect for you and the staff respects you. And so um, I think our relationship, I would imagine, will continue to just to get stronger and we're going to kind of learn from one another and what we need from one another. And I will try to do that with as much open and honest communication as possible because at the end of the day, like I already said, um, my – goal is in this position just to do whatever the team needs in order for the team to be at its best because we want to make history and to do that we all have to be on the same page and we all have to be empowering one another and getting the best out of one another. Um, last actually last couple here. Jeff, Carla, do you have a question? Hold on. Yeah. I, or is that or is that an old one? Go ahead. No, I, I just have a follow up for Becky. Um, I was trying to remember when was the last time you were captain in like from the beginning of the game, maybe not just kind of taking over for someone who had been subbed. Uh, that would be the Netherlands game. Oh, just recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, just uh, call me later. I'll, I'll give you a list of matches. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, I guess the last one goes to Jackie Gutierrez then. Go ahead, Jackie. Thanks, Aaron. Hi, Becky. Jackie here at Woman Kick Balls. Um, kind of switching things a little bit like COVID and uh, health uh, dynamic things. Um, but in previous years, like you didn't have to worry about like, you know, pandemic protocols and things like that. So um, obviously, you know, the overall health as a player is just so important. So um, just thinking about that, like with COVID precautions, do you feel as prepared as possible for this week, um, just considering the circumstances that you're in? Yeah, I would say that our medical staff uh, with U.S. Soccer has been exceptional. We've had so many Zoom calls where we're going over protocols for uh, how camp is going to be run, if there is a positive test, um, if there's the threat of a positive test. And so, I mean, I feel like everything has a plan. Um, and also, we as a national team are very used to adapting to things and pivoting. And so I kind of believe in the COVID world. So much is out of our hands. You kind of have to adapt and, and be adaptable. Um, and so I think as a team and as a, a whole organization, we've done really, really well with that.